Welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Danielle. And I'm Jackie. And we're just two best friends and ex Blockbuster employees rewatching some of the best and worst movies of the late 90s and early 2000s. And this week, we are talking about the 2004 comedy Euro Trip. And we are joined by my cousin Mark. Welcome. A little blurry there. Hello. <laughs> He's waving for the camera. <laughs> That, yeah, that wasn't the the number one. I wasn't putting up the bird. <laughs> all five. So if you want to get to know Mark a little better, pause, check out his trailer from earlier this week. You can also check out season one, episode 21, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. That was a wild ride, which I'm sure <laughs> this movie will be as well. But before we dive in, let's get into some Housekeeping. housekeeping. If you love the podcast and want to support us, here are, a few, here are a few ways you can. Did you know writing a review and or rating us helps us get more listeners? Make sure that you head to Apple, Spotify, Podchasers, or your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review. And if you like what you hear and want to buy us a virtual cup of coffee, head, out, head on over to ko-fi.com slash no more late fees. And let's jump in to the synopsis that is Eurotrip. After a brutal breakup at a high school graduation party, lovelorn Ohio teen Scott Thomas goes on a quest across Europe to find his sexy German pen pal, Micah. Mika. Mika. Michael. He thinks it's Michael. <laughs> Mikel. Mike. Mike. <laughs> What's up, my boy? <laughs> Joining him are his brainless buddy and a pair of twins that they meet up with in Paris. Scott's quest does not turn out to be easy, and the backpackers become embroiled in many farcical situations as they hop from country to country. The movie stars Scott Meklovix, hope I said that right, Jacob Pitts, Michelle Trackenberg, and Travis Wester. The movie was directed by Jeff Schaefer and written by Jeff Schaefer, Alec Berg, and David Mendel. You can watch it for free on Pluto. But before we get started, let's get into our ratings rewind. So you know the drill. Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating our Y2... We'll reveal the rating our Y2K versions of ourselves would give, and then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our scale consists of would buy it, would buy it again, the best would play on repeat. Five-day rental. Would watch again. Two-day rental. Eh, okay, but nothing to write home about. And same-day rental. Eastern European trash. <laughs> <laughs> and I only say this because it's, it's a reference to the movie. Yes. I do not have beef with Eastern European people. I love y'all. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark. What is your Y2K rating of Eurotrip? I would buy it. <laughs> it's if like, I was, was there allowed, another choice? <laughs> yeah, if I was allowed, I would buy it. Same. Bought it. Owned it. Constant play in the Conley family. I bought it. I got it. Looking promising. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this movie, I thought it was very popular, so I was surprised by this, but hmm. it had a budget of $25 million, but it only made $20.8 million. At this time, we just had so many to this. Like, first, we had Road Trip, and it's the same people who made Road Trip that made your Road Trip. So it just, you know, felt like a good companion, I guess you would say. So yeah, I was really surprised. I did it. It didn't make its budget back, but apparently it did pretty well internationally. So I'm wondering if this is including the intern. Well, it says worldwide, but I, I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm yeah. really surprised. What else came out around that time? Yeah. Well, while you look that up, I'm going to give you okay. guys some reviews. Stephanie Z Zacharek. I am sorry, Stephanie. I know you listen. I'm sorry I messed up your name. 
She don't listen. I don't know. Uh, you never know. Stephanie, what's up, girl? Sorry about messing up your name. She wrote for a salon and she said, the giddy ridiculousness of Euro trip is a pleasant surprise. The picture starts out slow and unsteady in its rhythms. But just when you begin to wonder if it's ever going to get funny or if it's going to be merely desperate all the way through, it lifts off like a wobbly helicopter and somehow it keeps flying. But on the flip side, Elvis Mitchell from the New York Times said, almost every girl in the movie with fewer than 10 lines to speak has to take her top off. In his review for The Village Voice, Michael Miller criticized the film for its constant anxiety that women might turn out to be men and vice versa. Yeah, we'll get into the transphobia, the homophobia of this movie. It doesn't yeah. age well. But although, again, not as successful at the box office as the producer's road trip were, Eurotrip did well on home video and became a cult classic. So maybe that's why I'm wondering if I even watched it in the movie or not, movie theater, or if I watched it on DVD. I, I, I don't remember. I don't remember either, and I'm typically pretty good about that. So top five in the box office for that week. So it did crack the top five. It was mm -hmm. number five. Number four was Miracle. Three was Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. Number two was last week's movie, Fifty First Dates. Mm -hmm. And then number one was The Passion of the Christ. Wait a minute. Miracle and Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen beat 50. Well, maybe Fifty First Dates had been out for quite no, a bit. I, I went from five to one. So okay. Eurotrip was five. Miracle was four. Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen 3, 51st Dates 2, Passion of the Christ 1. Okay, that makes sense. You know, yeah. Jesus had to be number one, apparently, <laughs> back then. So. And, and that the less passion confused. charted for several weeks. Yeah, that thing was going. I've never seen it to this day. It was too brutal. I heard, you know, who wants to see Jesus on the cross? All yeah, bloodied. I've, never, I've yeah. never seen it either. I've heard the stories, but. And like, we're going to have unseated. a time. It, huh? it was, it, it was number one for four weeks and unseated by Dawn of the Dead, which. Interesting. <laughs> There's a That's dichotomy a... there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is very interesting. So yeah, <laughs> we're, we're celebrating another movie that is having its third, 20th, 20th, 20th anniversary. 2004 to 2024 20th anniversary that's what i just said <laughs> <laughs> i had to do math <laughs> ever since math map or map math somebody math doesn't team. trust <laughs> my math abilities i geography danielle it's called geography <laughs> tomato tomato <laughs> so I do have a fun fact. I don't know if it's in your fun facts, but I'm going to say it anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> so apparently the writers came up for came up with this idea while they were doing rewrites on another movie we're doing this year, Danielle. You want to get guess? You it's know? in my notes. For Out Cold, <laughs> another one of my favorite movies. I'm like, oh, there's a reason why jackie lives in this space <laughs> let me tell you when i saw that fucking fact i was like god damn it that makes sense right it's all adding up so like the cooper hot tub scene because as everyone knows well not danielle she's never seen out cold there is I've a hot tub it. scene with uh, zach have you seen it I have, and oh. this is why i don't want to do it <laughs> uh. Well, continue <laughs> difference of opinion. So, uh, Zach Galifianakis has a hot tub scene in Out Cold, and so when they were writing it or helped helping to rewrite that scene, that's where they got the idea for the Cooper hot tub scene in Eurotrip. That scene makes no sense. It doesn't, because like how it's not even how, sexy. How dumb! <laughs> how dumb! <laughs> Oh, there's something. I, as soon as he would have said something is here, I would have been like on my breast, sir. <laughs> so the scene is that like Cooper jumps into the hot tub 
and because he sees that this girl is alone and in her bikini, this girl is a crush or whoever. I don't even think it's a crush. It's just any girl with tits, he's at mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And he starts to tell her that there's something on her bathing suit, tells her to rub in a circular motion, and this dumbass is doing it. Then he's like, you know what? I don't think you're going to get it. It's under the it's it's under your bikini you got to take that off and then continue to rub and this bitch was doing it and then he was like <laughs> you know what i think i need to help you out with that what <laughs> and she was gonna let him until her friends came back with the chablis <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but yeah that was that was crazy I do love that the producers really said it, it was important for them to cast real teenagers in these roles. And they, you know, they struggled with finding Scotty. The Maklovics is his name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But they eventually found him. They said they got to a point where they were going to restaurants. And looking at their waiters and saying, maybe it might be him because they couldn't find someone. Uh, <laughs> what, was the part written for him? Like, I'm not obviously they had struggled, but the name, it's just a coincidence that Scott and Scotty were the main oh, character. I think it was. I think it was just a coincidence. As I was watching the robot scene, which we'll get in, more into in a bit, I was like, was this part of the audition process? Because he <laughs> nailed being a robot. I'm like, I don't know if they could have found another actor to do it this well. Funny thing. I I didn't put this in the fun facts. I was like, oh, this isn't going to come up. But uh, I guess it did. <laughs> Turns out he said his one of his earlier acting coaches is who we can thank for such a great portrayal of a robot. Because his acting coach was really good at it and like made him do it. So that's why he was good at it in this movie. It is very funny. Because at it, first I was like, Scotty's a little flat, like I'm bored with him. But when he did that robot thing, I said, he's starting to lift up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and jump right in to Eurotrip. The first scene, they're at graduation. We meet Scotty and his family and Fiona comes up to him. He's really excited because he just graduated. And he's talking about how she's going to graduate in a year. And they'll be together. And she's like, oh, by the way, bye. Don't let the Fiona door hit you. Fiona's a cunt. She really is. I, I don't know. There's another word. Like, bitch didn't fit right. Because the way that she's doing cunty behavior. I'm just saying. I'm, and I'm not tired of all the way. cheating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I never, never cheated, cheated on, on you. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's me lying again. <laughs> like, <sighs> Mark, wouldn't you be like, what the hell? We're... No, for sure. He handled it well. I mean. He just cried a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But, but like, why wouldn't she wait until after? Like, why does it have to be in front of his parents? And then what's wrong with his parents? Why are they like taking pictures, recording? Nobody seems to be getting a hint. The uncle. Why is he just like, we never see this man again, but he just is <laughs> creepy and he's just standing there. You know, uh, like most graduations, there's auxiliary family members that. <laughs> no, there isn't. When we graduated, we got four tickets and I had to fight like hell to get an extra ticket for my dad. And I'm uh, wondering if Kristen Kirik, is that mm -hmm. her last name, like took this role because it was such a departure from Lana lane on smallville lana lang lang that's right uh, let me tell you i hate that bitch so much <laughs> not the actress i i i feel bad for her because i hate her character so much from smallville and i mean i think she did a good job because if you ever watch that show people are like in love with her and clark but her character was super annoying to me. So every time I see her in another thing, I'm like, I fucking hate you. So her being very cunty in this, I was like, great. I could hate her with no problem. <laughs> I, this is the one villain I'm not rooting for, Jackie. <laughs> she is very, very striking to look at. And like, I know that's not like end all be all. But like but every time she's on screen, I'm like, I can't take my eyes off you. Except for when she's with Matt Damon. <laughs> 
<laughs> Here's the thing, like, I don't, and this is just my opinion. She's beautiful, but she's one of those beautiful actors that I don't know if she's just never given been given the chance to have a really meaty role that I can mm -hmm. see what her acting capabilities yeah. are. So she's like real mediocre to me, like a Minka Kelly. Yeah. Again, I apologize, <laughs> but it's it's giving it's giving white paper, you know, like <laughs> basic paper, you know. You need some cardstock. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so the next scene is at Scotty's house. Um, we meet Scotty's brother, Bert. Bert's a amazing. I love Bert. Bert, he has opinions. <laughs> and he's not afraid to say them. And they're watching Scotty cry on record. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and Bert Who's... wants to record everything for posterity <laughs> if it's going to be even slightly embarrassing for Scotty. Who's worse, Bert or Ryan Reynolds' brother in Just Friends? Bert. Really? Yeah, because I don't like Ryan Reynolds' brother in Just Friends, like at least. They were he nice tried. to each other sometimes. <laughs> I mean, Bert did help by translating the email. Yeah, that's true. But it this was more of a, like, you're dumb type <laughs> but way. But it wasn't to be just... helpful. It was more like, you're an idiot and you broke up with this hot chick. <laughs> I love Bert. I love, <laughs> I love me some Bert. Can't be and mad then... at him. This is when we also find out about who Scott refers to as Mike, his German pen pal. And I love the you got mail as the mail motherfucker. What there's before we even got to the mail, Cooper gives a fist bump to Bert and says, Keep black, brother, or something like that. Yeah. Like, stay stay black. This? Yeah, stay. I was like, I'm not letting this shit slide. <laughs> And so, like, with the combination of that happening and then going right into the male thing, I was like, I'm peeping this twice now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. And then Cooper says, like, this, because Cooper just be talking to talk. He, <laughs> he just wants to play devil's advocate all the time. And so he makes a offhanded comment that the your pen pal is is probably some dude that like wants to have sex with you and is like gonna want to come meet you and stuff and scotty kind of dismisses it whatever and then they go to the party with scotty doesn't know right. so this is when we get introduced to matt damon who plays donnie the head of uh the band lustra they sing scotty doesn't know and everyone is jamming out rightfully so this used to be my ringtone <laughs> i love this song i know all the words and give us a sample like... plug give us a sample let's see <laughs> <laughs> yes, you Jackie. know all the words <laughs> i'll sing along let's get it going. i don't know why i'm all of a sudden shy i sing on the podcast very poorly i don't know why either <laughs> Scotty doesn't know that Fiona and me do it in a van every Sunday. Mm -mm. She tells him she's in church and she doesn't go. Still, she's on her knees and Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't, Scotty know. doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. Oh, whoa, Don't whoa. tell Scotty. <laughs> yes. I mean, the way, the deadpan way that Scotty stands there. As mind you, Fiona so bum rushes the stage and pushes him out of the way to get on stage and like literally grind, grind and lap dance all over. And first of all, did I never knew he had a name? I didn't know his character's name was Donnie, so that's news <laughs> to me. She's a grinding on Donnie and having the time of her fucking life, and he's just he just he's just standing there in disbelief. Now, Cooper, at this point, is in the hot tub with his shenanigans and bullshit. Yeah. 
And we do meet the twins before they the song starts playing, didn't we? Or is it after? You see, it, either yeah, way, gin, yeah. gin and tonic. He got her a gin and tonic. Yeah, that's when we were introduced ever. to the worst twins ever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they don't look like twins. They act like they don't know anything <laughs> about it's, each other. It's Jenny and Jamie, and Cooper doesn't even recognize Jenny as a female. <laughs> like she's just another one of the guys in their like little friend group. Yeah, and she has to constantly remind him. Yes, that she is a girl, which is... and then that's where we get the conversation that they are going on a backpacking through Europe trip. I forget how many running jokes start off in this scene. You have the the worst twins ever. You have the I didn't park my car here when when Cooper falls in the hot tub. <laughs> I think those two are constant. Scotty, Scotty doesn't know being a Scotty catchy doesn't, song. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. There were a lot of like long running jokes and even like like prior to this scene the Bert get, let me get my ca- the camera like Brad right. said several times I'm like yeah. how many running jokes are we gonna have in this <laughs> <laughs> I love how the twins are very opposite kind of like I think they could have gone a little bit further with Jenny mm-hmm. of like her being such an opposite to her brother but in some ways she kind of grounds him in his nerdiness yeah like he's very straight and narrow about things but he's the kind of person you got you're gonna need on a trip like everyone plays their role in mm-hmm. this this wonderful trip Tell that they go on. let's talk about how matt damon even got into this movie in this role in the first place so obviously we we all spotted him it turns out that he's actually friends with the producers from their days in at harvard and he was in prague at the time shooting the brothers Grimm. And he agreed to play the punk singer. But he was wearing a wig for the the Grimm, Brothers Grimm movie. So it worked out that he could actually shave his head. So when we get to Brothers Grimm, we're going to be really looking at that wig. Yeah, we are. (laughs) And it kind of also happened because nobody wanted to come over from the States to Prague to film this movie. So what they had to do is look at all the movies that were shooting in Prague at the time to see if anybody wanted to like come in. So I'm guessing that's why Lucy Lawless, who's behind me, ended up making a cameo, which I thought was interesting. And so same with like Jeffrey Tambor. Um, So, yeah, it worked out. (laughs) I asked Ken, I was like, you know who that is? He goes, Zena. Yes, (laughs) yes, it is Zena. (laughs) I feel like we could do another game like we did in Mark's trailer episode of like ranking her cameos because she I I feel like she showed up randomly in a lot of movies too. Yeah, definitely. I also like that, you know, Matt Damon's been around for a while. He's won an Oscar and still the the majority of the time someone kind of walks by him on the street, the street, they yell, (laughs) Scotty doesn't know at him. (laughs) So out of all of his achievements, Eurotrip still ranks pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I side eye him as a person, yes. but I do give him his props because that Dunkin' Donuts commercial with him and Ben, ben, ben Affleck, Affleck, this Super Bowl, a girl was cackling. <laughs> anytime was... they do the really thick bostonian accent yeah and i think oh, just the two of them together because they're so comfortable with one another yeah. like it gives them the license just be absolutely fucking bonkers i would like for them to be in a comedy together like it's really annoying that when they are together they're always doing dramas mm-hmm. but clearly they're comedy gold the two of them much I like would... us Facts. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm surprised. Like I'm really surprised that they haven't done one together, and because they're both up to being very zany and weird when they want to be. They've been in so many movies separately, yeah. and then when they are together in comedies, it's always just like a small cameo. I, I'm putting that out there. I need a Ben Affleck, Matt Damon buddy cop movie, buddy high movie. And I never see the day where you ask for a Matt Damon Ben Affleck movie, Danielle. It's that day. Is you know what it is? 
it's it's just a little backlog from that chocolate from Chicago. It, it, <laughs> you know that marijuana stores for years. Crops up every once in a while. Yep, that's what it is, y'all. <laughs> So the next morning, or I guess later that night, Scotty's wasted. He gets a email from Mike and it says, I want to come visit you in the States. And Cooper's gotten into his head. So he's all freaked out. He's like, don't come visit me, blah, blah, blah. And then it cuts to Mika, the very pretty German girl he has been corresponding with. And she gets very upset, blocks his email address and so then Scotty passes out and the next morning, Bert is reading all of Scotty's emails because that's what a little brother does. Mm. And he's like, I don't know why you passed up this opportunity with this chick Mika and has to like set him straight how his German is very poor. He even pulls up that picture. <laughs> like if you saw that picture mark wouldn't you be like who's the hot chick like i would have yeah. written like i become a pen pal and this guy is my friend supposedly i'd have been like who's the hot chick next to you and that would have ended all of this immediately because <laughs> it would have been like fool that's me oh for sure i think i think just even seeing the way the guy was standing it was just you're obviously made to get drawn to the blonde chick right yeah. <laughs> Everybody immediately goes there. And then you look to the side like, what is that weirdo? <laughs> right. He looks <laughs> yawn guy. <laughs> so Scotty realizes he made a huge error. And, just, and Cooper convinces him to go to Germany to win back Mika. And has a job at a law firm. But he's like, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm just not going to tell him I'm going to go. I got the cell phone. It's fine. Because <laughs> Cooper wants to explore his sexual roots right because america was founded by even prudes. though people were here <laughs> by prudes yeah. and he got to get his freak on in europe but i also find it interesting because so is he trying to be a lawyer and then just not just showing up to do the least and make the most <laughs> Right. And also they don't tell Scott's parents no. that they're going to Europe. Yeah. They tell them that they're going on a camping trip. Cooper tells them that. I think yeah. I don't even think Scotty tells them that. So my question is like, did Scott leave it up to Cooper to tell his parents uh, the situation? So. Cause that doesn't, he knows Cooper. Flight risk, loose cannon, <laughs> <laughs> not to be trusted. And then also they buy a flight day of, and they're like couriers. Did they even drop off the thing that they were supposed to drop off? I, it's yeah. like, we never hear anything else, right? I expected it to be like, hey, we'll be couriers. And then they're like sitting with the chickens in on like a crate in some like metal airplane. Right. And you can see the pilot. The cargo like, that's area, what, yeah. Exactly. Like, that's what I was expecting. And then- they're on this really nice flight on Lufthansa. <laughs> and during the beginning of the movie, I'm like, who does Scotty remind me of? Like, he talks like someone. Mm. And it was about this time I realized he talks like Freddie Prince Jr. Mm, yeah, right. Yeah. And he's got that long, angular face With the and spiky, the spiky hair. Yeah. Hair, yeah. He 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 was very FPJ esque. What happened um, to that actor? That's the only question I was asking to myself. Was the, these three actors? I feel like Jamie I've seen in other things, but then I was like, am I confusing him with the guy who plays Boyle on um, Brooklyn Nine Nine a little bit? But I'm like, what happened to them? I don't know. I'm gonna look into it. Okay. I'm gonna investigate. Do it. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where's your ooh Harriet the Spy journal so you can investigate? That's the only thing I, I remember there? her from. Everybody else, I you know. Really? Don't what? Even, don't what even about know. Buffy, Ice Princess, Gossip Girl? Okay, little, I see. Little I, bit, little I heard it. Too... <laughs> I heard it. Yeah. I heard what I was saying. My yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> 
two two boys in that family didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Auntie didn't get to watch a lot of what she wanted to watch. Gotcha. <laughs> I caught it. <laughs> So then we get to London, they're waiting for their train to Germany, and they decide to go into a pub because there's no drinking age there, which I think there is a drinking age. It's just 18, so they can't drink. Mm -hmm. And they accidentally walk into a Manchester United like club pub, and they're all very intense. And I love how they're like interrogating them. And so Scotty and Cooper lie and say they're part of the U.S. Manchester U fan club. And then Scotty sings a weird rendition of My Baby Takes the Morning Train. Is that a song they play during those games? Like, I was very confused. I That's think what I was, was wondering, like, too. I think he panicked. And that was the first thing that popped into his head. Because when Vinnie Jones yells, sing at you, you sing. <laughs> and and then he just weave the Manchester United into it is well, all I can speculate <laughs> but and while he's singing they're literally from behind the bar handing out like weapons like chains and <laughs> bars and stuff like they're gonna beat the shit out of these two American kids but then they're all right because they, they got a song it was a, it was very aggressive very aggressive and then went nowhere and then also a double decker bus question mark like yeah i mean they're over there okay back to map math <laughs> i know there's a train that goes mm-hmm. to france yes. from england are there like bridges or something, or do they have to get on a boat to get over to France? How's yeah, that work? Have you heard of the channel, Danielle? Mm-mm. Underwater? The channel, it goes under the English Channel. There is a tunnel that goes under the English I Channel. I thought that's where the train went. There is. But you can drive there too. I'm trying to figure out how the double de- double decker bus got from England to France. I uh, there must be fairies, I would assume. That's what I was asking, because yeah. I'm like, okay. I don't think there's, that's that's a long, that would be a long bridge. I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> you are but I, I felt safe enough to ask yes. a silly question. Okay, because sorry, I, I was not sure. Okay, continue. Okay, and I'm sure there are cargo trains too, so maybe it even got put on like a little. A double-decker though. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how tall that tunnel is. Yeah. Okay, so they are now in Paris. That's where the double-decker bus drops them off. They're like, oh, the twins are in Paris. Let's meet them there, which is weird that they were able to rendezvous with them because the twins didn't seem to have a cell phone. Email. Oh, but how often are you checking your email in 2004? Back then, all the time. Girl, I had to know what was up. But MySpace. In Paris? How? You go into a library? Yeah, they had internet cafes. Hmm. Everywhere. Okay. I will be gaming. And when I say (laughs) gaming, I mean Sims. (laughs) You're really cool. (laughs) So we we meet up with Jamie and Jenny. Uh, Jamie is decked out he has read frommer's back uh, front to back and so he knows all the things he has uh, what did they call it it's like a fanny pack but also like a concealed one yeah tra- well it, it, the, he calls it a traveler's money belt but there's a, like a throwaway line later where they call it something really funny a nurse or something i don't know what it is. um so he can keep the passports and the money safe. And then he also purchased a Leica M7, like a really fancy old old school camera to take pictures of his adventures. I feel like he should have been hiding that more because it's yeah. so easy to grab it, like pull it off him and run. Yeah. He had that thing out on his chest, no problem. Yeah, but hiding the passports. That like, honestly, that gives me so much anxiety. What? right to like i mean he's trustworthy but it 
when I travel, it's like, I feel like I have to have it. Like I personally have to have it or usually in the family, I'm the one that holds it. There's like only other one other person. Well, two other people that I would let have my passport if we were going somewhere and it would be my my mom and you. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Because I I've never seen you lose anything. This is when we get in line for the Louvre uh, and the line is very long. And I've learned from TikTok, there is another entrance to the Louvre, not through the pyramid. It's over off to the side. And they're like, you can just walk in, even when the line is like that crazy, because no one knows it's there. So now they do. (laughs) Now they do. (laughs) You ruined it, Jackie. (laughs) TikTok ruined it. (laughs) And then the robot man who. This was such a random scene. But the thing that aggravates me the most of just like follow through is that when the robot man come like that scene comes up, Cooper does not seem annoyed by it at all. Yeah. He has literally nothing happens. It's Scotty who has like the robot offer. He like is fascinated by it. So at the ending of the movie, we see Cooper see another robot man at school and he grabs a weapon and he's like mad and so i was confused by that i think in that scene the the reason why scotty engages is with the robot man is because cooper points it out and he's like i fucking hate when people do that and then like scotty is kind of doing it to taunt cooper at first but then he gets the other robot man real mad and then there's a (laughs) robot fight (laughs) i guess you're right i just because he didn't seem so angry about it like he literally picked up a weapon this time around to go fight this man Uh, it's like me and birds you you don't like it you don't like it yeah but you're not fighting them i'm too scared at all costs (laughs) you're too scared to fight them (laughs) i i still love that the one of the first things i bought you for the podcast is a goddamn birdhouse yeah totally forgot (laughs) (laughs) I very much appreciate it. And I also very much appreciate that no birds live in it. <laughs> you, you don't like any birds, even the domesticated ones? No, no. What? I have an exception or an appreciation from afar for owls and penguins, but that's it. Well, you know, now that I really, I'm really thinking about it. What did you think about when I told you that I got Tweety and Sugar Pop Daddy? I was just glad I wasn't around. <laughs> I I forgot. Maybe you came well, over because... and helped my mom kill them because they did. Poor things. <laughs> I did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> and for a period of time, we did have cockatiels at our house. And they would like fly free. And I think that's what exacerbated it because I never knew where they were. And just fucking birds poop everywhere. I just don't like it. You guys don't have chickens? Uh, you seem like the farm fresh type. Uh, no. Well, I don't like eggs, so there's really no incentive for me to have chickens. <laughs> Dang. Ken would just love to whole... have chickens, but mm-mm. Just throw that whole animal out the window. <laughs> <laughs> no, please. Unless they're in a baked good, I, I'm not down with any eggs. Stoner chicks. We're four friends who met through comedy and bonded through weed. I'm Grace Penzel. I'm Kayla Teal. I'm Stephanie Thompson. I'm Phoebe Richards. If you love smoking weed and laughing with your friends, this podcast is for you. Weekly episodes will drop on Fridays starting April 2nd. So subscribe now to Stoner Chicks wherever you get your podcasts. Coming to your favorite podcatcher soon. So Scotty and Cooper convince Jenny and Jamie to come to Berlin with them. So they're at the train station and Cooper's like ogling this girl's ass as she's getting a Coke out of the vending machine and then like realizes it's Jenny. And I think that's when like the little switch starts to flip for him. (laughs) Like, oh, Jenny is a a chick. She's noted. And then also in this scene, Jenny meets because she's very 
attached to the illusion of meeting a French man who like whisks her away on some romantic European vacation. So she does meet a French man. They kind of ex- exchange pleasantries and then they have to, to get on the train, the train ride. <laughs> <laughs> what? They're in this little car, the four of them. And this Italian man played by Fred Armisen comes in very nicely dressed. Is he? Is it Ita- it's Italian, right? That he's saying. Yes. I thought it, I didn't know what he was saying at first, but he he did say some French. I mean Italian things at the end. Yeah, Sorry. Goes, Go ahead. Miscuse. <laughs> <laughs> And so it was like every time they go through a tunnel. So at first I was dying, cracking up. Like usually I don't laugh out loud at many of the movies we do. Even though I find them funny, I don't laugh out loud. The first tunnel where they come back into the light and he just has his hand on Jamie's knee. And Jamie's just kind of like looking at him and, and Fred Armisen's looking at him. And he's just like, oh, miscuse it. I was dying i'm sorry i started doing my research already because i couldn't these are the names of some of the reddit forums about him is fred armison a psychopath or just a weird asshole (laughs) fred armison dark side elizabeth moss my marriage to fred armison was traumatic (laughs) fred armison is like so mean so mean this is a full article on Medium, not even a forum. Okay? Shady things everyone just ignores about comedian Fred Armisen. Nine dark stories about seemingly nice guy Fred Armisen. Girl, I done told you. My radar. <laughs> you Mark's no Googling way. it right now. <laughs> I know. I have, I have to see. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> So, and X painted a picture of him entitled Portrait of a Sociopath. Oh, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is my Roman Empire. <laughs> we finally found it, Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> he said he felt bad for everyone he's dated. Girl, I can't. Jackie cut this for a social post because <laughs> this is good. <laughs> Elizabeth Moss said he impersonated a normal person. The Scientologist said he impersonated a normal person. So we keep going through tunnels and then he's like up on Jamie and then the long tunnel, we come out and he has no pants on. And every time he's just like, oh, Miss (laughs) Goose. And Johnny, my brother, said when we talked about taking a train ride through Europe this summer, Johnny said, I am going to be the Italian man from Eurotrip <laughs> on the train. <laughs> <laughs> so he's very excited to to fulfill his dream of being the mis- miscuse man from Eurotrip. He did fly in from the US. Like remember I was saying most of the people they got was from Prague. He did fly in and they were like really happy that he could do it and that he fit the suit, which I I questioned when I saw that because I was like, did y'all get the suit first before getting the actor or did someone like back out back out? Like I was confused by that, but also laugh because that's fitting. You could also just ask him to bring his own suit. So (laughs) that suit was perfect for it was for him for that character. (laughs) So where are we next? They stop in Italy. Do- uh, yeah, because oh. they have to switch trains. And so there's like a couple hours before they have to get on their next train. And Jamie wants to go see this fisherman monument. And then Jenny points out that there's a nude beach. Number one, you know a man wrote this because no woman traveling with four men is ever going to say, let's go to the nude beach. She was down. She was down. But, but again, also- written by a man. <laughs> Maybe One. she was trying to prove her her femininity. <laughs> Maybe, but what my question is: You think I'm pulling out my tatas for my brother in front of a brother? Yeah, <laughs> and I don't want to see his wang. Like <laughs> I don't. I don't, Sorry, Johnny. <laughs> when I, if I ever think anything, like when my 
siblings are in bathing suits it's barbie parts you know what i'm saying like it doesn't exist right also yeah. it kind of plays into like the worst twins ever that they're yes. fine with seeing each other naked it reminds me of that actress from Grey's Anatomy who made out with her brother in a movie for real. Like they were both cast, like actual brother and sister cast in a movie and made out. Yeah. Yeah. A scandal. Yep. Oh God, what is her name? It was Lexi. <laughs> Hold on, I'm finding it. I'm finding it. Oh, I don't like that. But anyway, so they go to the nude beach and it's just dick and balls as far as the eye can see. There is not a woman on that beach. And we yeah. as women don't get a lot of peen in movies. So even though it's not good peen, Jack Y2K Jackie was like, it's something. Let let me let me examine the evidence here. I was like, let me see them flex a little bit. Can we get some hard peen? That's a little flimsy over here. I'm gonna see if there's some girth or something. Especially because then they start. So Jenny shows up to the beach and starts trying to take her top off, and all of the men on the beach see, and they start like zombie running towards her, and just. Men running naked, not a good look. There's just a lot of flapping. Mm. <laughs> so when we talk about Jenny and Jamie being like the worst twins ever, and we know later down the line, they make out. Uh -huh. It reminds me of the ask actress, Shyler. Oh, God, what is her name? Why can't I remember it? Didn't she Shyler Lee. Like Shyler Lee. <laughs> I am, but it does it doesn't have it there. And also I keep thinking it's Skylar Fisk. And so I'm trying to get that out. Somebody else is grabbing the mic. Anywho, it reminds me of Sh Sh Shyler. There it goes. Lee. Yeah. Lee. Shyler Lee. So okay. I read this twice now and I keep saying to myself, I must be missing something here. Gray's actress. First film role was kissing her brother. What and... is the name of her brother? Putting him on blast too. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm asking really hard questions. Apparently, <laughs> it said it's been spun over the year. This person was on BroadwayWorld.com trying to defend this behavior. She said, mm. "She said it's been spun over the years as if it were a makeout session, and it wasn't." Shyler Lee, however, made out with her brother on film with multiple takes. It was pre-planned and they were both cast in the roles. I don't even have words. <laughs> like, I've seen the video. And I don't get it. I don't care for this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Hungry actors have been known to do some desperate things to break into the business taking terrible roles, whatnot. But can you imagine wanting to be in a movie so badly that you agree to kiss your brother, not once, but twice? And we're not talking a cheek peck. We're talking a real kiss. Grey's Anatomy's Shyler Lee's first movie was a pretty cheesy looking family film, a family film called Kickbox Kickboxing Academy, which co-starred her real life brother as her love interest. Can we say disgusting and unnecessary? Danielle. What about the holidays okay. after that? You gotta <laughs> like, talk to your feather. Yeah, or did like, your mom hey, go look see at it? This, watch this hey, movie that we were in. Oh, by the way, what do you think about it? our? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the brother's name is Christopher Cayman Lee, and Danielle, this is in our time frame. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I'm not. I will not take party to incest jackie that's i where think I draw this the needs line. to be a live episode <laughs> so we can witness it together um, for the I first time bring that do you uh, hey sis we're gonna be movie stars after this <laughs> even i just feel like if it's a family film they didn't need to kiss at all because remember in arrested development justine bateman and what's the other the brother's name jason bateman, bateman. Jason bateman. They played like boyfriend and girlfriend, but they never kissed. It was like a joke. 
even yes. though it's just weird. It was meta because everyone knew they were brother and sister and it's right. arrested development and it's very right. like on brand humor. That fine. Yeah. Still weird, but fine. But why why kid like did did they not tell maybe because she was going by he was going by Stephen Bauer and not Lee, so they didn't know they were siblings, but it's just like <laughs> They know. She knew. Yeah, they know. I know. I just, <laughs> I'm just wondering why no one said this is not good. <laughs> and also, if you want to be an actor so bad and you think you're going to do well, it it's it, going to come back to haunt you. They did a really good job, like burying this because it barely comes up unless you, you know. I just don't understand how this happens. Yeah gives me heart palpitations okay sorry um, i know that was a rabbit hole but <laughs> my god it was it was a good rabbit hole <laughs> so my my favorite part about the scene with the zombie dick flingers is at the end there's a very not a very an older man who runs slower than the rest of them and he's <laughs> just going chica chica <laughs> as he runs after denny and it just cracks me up with his little flat butt cheeks <laughs> out for everyone to see and then we're back on the train scotty's reading mika's emails every time i wrote her name in my notes i spelled it a different way <laughs> I, I was like i i don't i still don't know how to spell this cheeks chick's name so every time i read it i'm like oh yeah that's what i meant and then scotty starts fantasizing about her and then David Hasselhoff's face pops up and he's like singing a German song <laughs> during the fantasy. That is an excellent touch. Yeah, because you forget how big David Hasselhoff's, Hasselhoff is in Germany. Like he is a national treasure to them. Yeah. He is motherfucking Michael Jackson in Germany, okay? <laughs> he's that level. I'm not even exaggerating. They and, love him. Yes. And then... Scotty's like making out with Mika in this fantasy and then he wakes up and it is Italian man again, like literally licking the side of his face. And I love how <laughs> Is this our first on camera gag from you, Daniel? So what had happened was I left the IMDb page up from that <laughs> kickboxing academy thing <laughs> and unbeknownst to me a trailer started to run and you know that trailer they make it out i was like it's the kids I don't know. you weren't ready i wasn't <laughs> it's a full ass uh, conspiracy my god all right <laughs> let me get back to the notes so i can be on task <laughs> So now we are in Amsterdam and this is where like the moment Cooper has been waiting for red light district district in Amsterdam. He, he finds a flyer for Wunder six. Um, so he's going to go fulfill his, his sexual fantasies. But I heard that like Amsterdam isn't as like Americans make it to be like this very big thing that it's so sexualized and it's like nothing there you know it's, like they they don't it's so not a big deal I was very upset that we did not get to walk through the red light district when I was there uh because I was with Ken's family so <laughs> you know choose your battles and so but it was like because they have or maybe it was in Amsterdam I think it was Nuremberg but I'm sure it's similar it's just a, a a section mm -hmm. and like in Nuremberg there were like big giant walls so you like had to very purposely walk down like this little street to see all of the ladies in the windows mm -hmm. so unless you're seeking it out I doubt that you would even like stumble upon it upon it like accidentally turn down the road but yeah it's not like people I didn't experience any like people handing out flyers on the street or anything I say, if you're really down for some freaky shit and want to see some things, skip Amsterdam and go to Thailand and go down Khao San Road, I think it is. 
I saw ping pong pussy show. Literally what you think it means. I didn't know you could shoot ping pongs out your pussy, <laughs> but you can into fish bowls. And Jackie, I'll send you a picture to put into that because there's a man with me with a sign that says ping pong pushy show and me going like this. Uh, what a party trick. Right? You can win well, you can win goldfish. That's awesome. <laughs> so Cooper walks into when they're six. And this is definitely where he parks his car. And he is met with a lot of scantily clad women and Lucy Lawless, who is the madam. So (laughs) she's going to take good care of him. And don't worry if it's too much. You got a safe word. I just love that he doesn't even try to ask her, like, how do I pronounce this? He's not even concerned. He's like, I'm never going to want to stop. And then these huge dudes come in in leather. Hans and Gruber. And they have him handcuffed on this thing. And he is screaming for dear life. <laughs> I love the little monkey with the symbols that <laughs> like, I guess. What is it doing? in his balls. <laughs> That's all I can assume. <laughs> uh... <laughs> one, one thing I loved about, about this when he walked in into that one she greets him and he's he yells the flyer and he says that you can get a free shirt (laughs) (laughs) that comes in later when they ask him how his night went but that was he had cooper had so many little one-liners that that you got to pay attention to and that was one that i was dying laughing when he said that (laughs) he made it seem like that's what he was there for when we all knew (laughs) trying to get into or who he was trying to get into but like what what (laughs) contraption was that so it looks like a dildo spill spit spinner essentially there's like multiple dildos going in a circle a a dildo 3000 like it splits (laughs) apart (laughs) and what is it almost like a pine cone in the middle like it's spike it's not a regular dildo that is in the middle like, what is the purpose of the other ones looping when there's only one hole that it can go to? Like, I was choices. I, I was thinking about the the, the logistics. Size. Yeah, like how is this happening? Because we know it's going up his butt, but we don't know what thing. Like, and then we just hear him screaming, and I said, "My boy is done." He was then, walking funny and everything. Afterwards. Yeah, the next scene, he has his free t-shirt on and he's <laughs> he's walking a little side saddle. <laughs> and Jamie randomly goes to a store to get his camera fixed or cleaned. Yeah, And some girl is like getting horny over the camera and she decides to give him a blow job in the back of the store or outside in the alleyway. And she's like ser- serious. I think in my mind, I had I knew he was getting robbed in this scene, but I thought it was her because that would have made sense. But no, she was, was really up, yeah. She was really down to like give him a BJ and was happy. And this man willingly took off his <laughs> fanny pack chest thing. I don't know what we call it, and gave it to the guy from. <laughs> Drew Carey Show. Carey show. <laughs> I don't know what his name is. Diedrich Bader, I think yeah. is his name. I probably pronounced that incorrectly. So, but what I was confused about was I thought that pack had their passports and money, but how were they able to fly afterwards? Because they had no passports. You you can, like, if anything happens to your passports, that's why we have American consulates. Embassies? Yeah, and embassies and stuff in every country, because if anything happens, they can help you out in getting your documentation so that you can get home. Hmm. But then that's why they don't have any money to travel for the rest of the trip. (laughs) They're able to get a ride. They hitchhike. Hold on. We we missed. What, What did we miss? The hash brownies. These two fools. Okay, so I was offended as a as a Jamaican that they go to Amsterdam, and I promise you, you go to Amsterdam, you're not stumbling on some Jamaican bakery. Okay, if they have hash brownies, it's just hash brownies. 
hash brownies and Jamaicans are not tied together. Yeah. I found it racist because there's no <laughs> other black people in this fucking movie. And there yep. he is. And these two idiots are trying to like act like they're all high and shit. And he tells them, this is just a bakery. <laughs> there is no weed in these fucking brownies, you fucking white Americans. <laughs> I do really love when he tells her, him, put your clothes back on, white boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's like some stripping. Look, there have been times when you think you're getting high and you maybe take it a little exaggeration, but that was just, y'all are ridiculous. <laughs> so now, because Jamie was robbed, we have to do a little hitchhiking, but don't worry, Scotty speaks German. And so this truck driver pulls over and he says something about like, he's been up for three days straight or like (laughs) driving three days straight. He's been awake for 14 hours and he's just like on pills and caffeine (laughs) essentially. And Scotty's like, cool. So Berlin, can we go to Berlin? And the guy's like, nah, I I stabbed a guy in Berlin. I'm never going back to Berlin. And Scotty's like, cool. He says he's going to Berlin. So they all get in this truck. And they end up in Bratislava. <laughs> <laughs> and it is the equivalent of like a post-apocalyptic wasteland is what they perceive it to or like portray it to be. In one of the bone, like the clips at the end, there's a little child literally shitting and peeing just <laughs> in the street. And I'm like, with full on breaking the fourth wall (laughs) eye contact, which is the most unsettling part of it. I was so disturbed. (laughs) I'm glad they didn't put that in the movie. There's also a dog just holding a human hand, like severed human hand. And then there's a random guy and he's like talking about (laughs) Bratislava and stuff. And Ken goes, oh, that's the bad guy from the saint. Because Ken's brain works like that. And I'm like, <laughs> holy shit, it is the bad guy from the scene. And it like, he has nothing to do. Like, it is just a quick little cameo. He's not in any other scenes. I'm like, that's kind of weird that he showed up. Well, they had already taken out their money trying to figure out what money they had. And they're like, what can we, like, what the hell can we do with this? And then they... <laughs> made it seem like the literally it was like a dollar and 17 cents or something crazy a dollar 83 american (laughs) right and they're living it up there they have manicurists jenny is taking a bubble bath with a mask they have robes on they're eating lobster and then they flick a nickel to one of the butlers and he he slaps his boss and he's like i'm out this bitch i'm going to start my own hotel with a nickel now, I know that our money can go a little bit further in certain countries, but that was just fucking ridiculous. And they still had money to spare to go clubbing. That club scene, man. <laughs> I Michelle Trachtenberg in the scene was just giving me Sarah Michelle Geller vibes. Like, the way she was dancing and stuff. I was like, she's just being like her big sister. <laughs> we go into the nightclub. There is a club mix. Of Scotty Scotty doesn't doesn't know playing. (laughs) And this is like the second time they've heard it somewhere else while they've been out. So, and and I love that Scotty's just like, it is a banger. It is what it is. (laughs) (laughs) Jenny sees Christoph in the nightclub and he says that he owns it. This is the, the French guy from the train station earlier in the movie. So he invites her to the VIP section but then she quickly finds out because he's like, I'm going to take you on yachts. We're going to go to the, to the Mediterranean. And then he mentions his wife and she's like, you're married. And he's like, yeah. And so she's like, you sleep with other women. And he's like, and other men. What of it? Like, let me just tell you, I was down. <laughs> I would have been like, oh, cool. Your wife knows about this. Whatever. Let's do this. Because yeah. I would have been like, I need a flight yeah. to Germany <laughs> with my boys. <laughs> I, and I need someone to help me get my passport so I can get home eventually. He would have been doing all the things. And I he owns been a cool nightclub. Look, you're only young once. And everybody needs that story about an older man from Europe that took you around and you had 
fanciful sex with on a yacht and lived it up and then went back home for college. Anybody could do that. I like Taylor Townsend and on Ray. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> on um, and so while Jenny is off with uh, Chris, the guys just get a bottle of, of absinthe and they start seeing the green fairy pretty quickly. And so now they're all partying. <laughs> Jenny comes back because she's offended by Kristoff's wife. So she starts slamming the absinthe. We're all dancing, having a groovy time. And then there is Scotty and Cooper are at the bar and you see behind them, Jamie is making out with someone and they're like, good for Jamie hooking up twice in Europe. And then (laughs) they pull apart and it is Jenny and Jamie making out because they are the worst twins ever. (laughs) This is so nasty. I was uncomfortable for whatever reason. I was, I don't remember feeling that way. Because you didn't know when you were You didn't understand the gravity of the situation. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I guess there's a lot of scenes like that but that one in particular i was like all right let's let's get this scene over with here come on guys. yeah i just don't understand it was so unnecessary and, like i know why but mm. and maybe like, like an ass grab or something would have been okay yeah. you know Oops, or like, like from her back he's dancing up on her and then like but oh, yeah right. they were they weren't just making out she was licking he was licking her neck it was yeah it was a lot (laughs) and i i struggle with movies in our time frame sometimes because i know some people just have very slim figures and that's that's fine but like there are actresses in these movies where it is they are unhealthily skinny like Mm -hmm. they are just so painfully thin and I felt like that with Michelle Trachenberg. Like there was like not an ounce of meat on her and no muscle. Like it's one thing to be thin and, and toned and everything, but like it was, it, it made me uncomfortable at times, especially like in her bikini scene in this nightclub scene where she, she doesn't have much on. And I was just like, oh, I, I just want to take care of you. Plus, cause you know that, whatever we see on screen, they're 10 times smaller than yeah. that. And I could just imagine, I, I really feel for any of those actresses, any of those young actresses, how much pressure was put on them in that time period. It, you know, you talk about muscular, they couldn't be, they couldn't even be muscular. That wasn't no. what, it was just so scary, skinny. And yeah, I feel bad for them. That's a lot of pressure. And it really is very and not to say like that she maybe she, I, I maybe she some of them are naturally just very thin and we could see that in them later on in life that they have not got any bigger but yeah I feel bad too what happens next um the next scene is they finally make it to Berlin they show up at Mika's house she's not there dad explains that She's doing like a a semester at sea and she's doing orientation in Rome and then she'll be on a ship for a couple of months. While they're having this conversation, I I hate this scene. So the little brother, Mika's little brother. Uh, another very, just like so unnecessary and not funny in the slightest, even back then for that yes. time period, it just wasn't funny. It, it was wasn't. so not necessary at it, all like i know you want to be raunchy and you want to <laughs> yeah it, so so the scene is while while they're having this conversation with the dad the little brother draws literally like a little tiny mustache on his upper lip and then starts doing like a, the heil hitler walk and i it's just to make a child do this not knowing what he's doing yeah and like you said it's not funny it's not okay it it just it 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 made me really upset and then at the end to see in the bloopers they're teaching him how to do the walk like it just added insult to injury and very for very obvious reasons the scene is cut out or those those shots with the little brother are cut out of the the dvd in in germany 
There was another, I'm not, sorry, there's a, um, despite all the political incorrectness in this film, there was one scene that was just too much for the studio referred to by producers as the Anne Frank sex scene. In the scene, never filmed, but available in script form on the original DVD, they claim Cooper finds a flyer for a sex club called The Secret Room and accidentally misidentifies the house of Anne Frank as the club. He asks somebody, is this the secret room? And they go, yes, it will change your life. Encountering a big line outside, Cooper assumes he has found the correct place, but instead of waiting, he goes through a back door. Once he discovers a small room with a small bed, he decides to get naked and wait for a sex worker. But soon after, finds himself exposed to a front in front of a tour group to make matters worse and frank frank's only living relative was a part of the tour group and as if it wasn't bad enough to horrify the studio the scene also had cooper reaching for a small mannequin one guess to as to whom it was modeled after and covering his private parts with it resulting in an unintended unintended sexually explicit visual for the tour group the producers mm-hmm. wrote the club Bandersack scene to replace the scene once it was nixed. Like, who, who even thinks that? Yeah. To, like... No. Let me tell you, motherfuckers are crazy. No, I don't even know how... I'm like, I do <laughs> transitions. So we're in the in Vatican City. <laughs> <laughs> Before that, I found out who the Dustin Hoffman of Czech's, uh, Czech Republic is. Who is it? Miroslav Taborski. It's the man who throws the nickel oh. and slaps it. <laughs> <laughs> they had to convince him to be in it. He, <laughs> I just love that they call him the Dustin Hoffman of the Czech Republic. <laughs> Very specific. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they they said he didn't want to slap someone with the back of his hand. They had to go into a very long explanation of American prostitution and pimpdom <laughs> in the origins of the pimp slap and how it was the worst thing you could do to another human. So you did more directing to that guy than I've done in my entire career, joke Kevin Smith, who was the <laughs> moderator of the panel when they said this. Which I find interesting. Yeah. So now Vatican City, Jamie sold his Leica so that they have enough money to fly home. So they're they're feeling okay now. That was sweet. It was very sweet. They're on the lookout for Mika. They see her going in with a private tour into I don't even know what that building is called. They they I don't know if we we saw them as the audience, but I don't know if they saw them, but I I think this is, I don't know what the building is called either, but it's where the Pope lives. <laughs> and I don't know. Does he live there? I think it's just where they do official business. Like when it's like the church harem. I don't know what the fuck they're called. <laughs> oh, the <harem. laughs> I don't think that's what a group of popes <laughs> a group of cardinals is called. <laughs> yes. Everyone knows cardinals. One cardinal is a cardinal. Multiple cardinals is a harem. <laughs> and it's the Pope's harem of cardinals? It is. Okay. Officially. <laughs> you don't even have to look it up. <laughs> I'm just, uh, the only frame of reference I have for anything in Vatican City is this movie and Angels and Demons. So. It's a lot. <laughs> I, I knew of the process going into Angels and Demons. I was like, oh, I know. I know they got to have a meeting. I know they got to burn white smoke to declare a new pope. I know things. Euro trip was educational. <laughs> Where did you study that Euro trip? Euro trip. <laughs> so they're trying to get into that building and it's only for private tours. And so then... This is where the R word starts getting thrown around and I hate it. So Jenny lies and says that Cooper is special, special needs, but she uses another word for it. And he's eating an ice cream cone like a toddler. So 
kind of tracks the guard feels bad for them and then he's like well where's your guide and so she kind of shoves jamie at him and jamie can recite the frommer's guide from memory <laughs> and then some so the guy's like oh or the guard's like cool go on in and so oh they ask that jamie takes over another english tour because the guy got sick so jamie has business to attend to now i don't know where jenny goes but cooper and scotty are left to their own devices jenny stays with with them and jamie? she's yeah with jamie yeah she seems okay. very proud of him actually as he's going through the tour also i think i found out what it's called the the building or something i, I think they call it the conclave but the yes uh, that sounds right from angels and demons <laughs> <laughs> and the the chimney that they the temporary chimney that they installed on the roof of the sistine chapel for the mm. smoke to come out so I also did not realize that the Sistine Chapel is in Vatican City until I was researching where in Rome we were going to go. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I was hoping to avoid Vatican City, but I guess we're not. So Cooper finds a rope and starts yanking on it, which rings the bell. I wrote down what, what the bell it, is. It, the bell for the that the Pope is dead? Yes. Hold on but it has a name bell of san marco which indicates that the pope is dead so everyone from down below is like oh my gosh the pope is dead they're going to have to congregate all the cardinals are going to get in their harem and i was about to say <laughs> you mean the harem <laughs> let's do correct meanwhile uh, some, uh, cooper's wearing a pope hat he puts another hat on scotty but then he catches the Pope hat on fire. And, and the, this felt so genuine, like something friends would actually do where he's like, your hat, your hat is on fire. And Cooper responds, we don't need no water. <laughs> the fuck occurred. I was like, that is exactly how friends would respond. To one <laughs> I just thought it was. I thought Scotty had more sense. I find yes. I found myself being disappointed. Yes. Like, Scott, what are y'all doing? Why are you playing with the Pope's clothes? <laughs> For, first of all, the fact that they got away with this. I know it's a movie, but like that would have been an international incident. That is like that's bad. The well, fact I that think they, they were they were broadcasting it, right? Because the bro yeah. little brother was watching it. <laughs> yeah. And, and he was the, like, I got to record this. <laughs> the fact that the Vatican even allowed this Anybody part to of the movie there. to come out. Yeah. Because you know they control everything. But they were in Prague. All of this movie was shot in Prague. So but still like putting the Vatican City in any sort of bad light. Yeah. And not doing their due process of the two weeks that the Cardinals have to be locked in a room while they decide on a new Pope. Also what I learned in Angels and Demons. <laughs> I mean, um, I'm sure they could. I wonder if a statement came out that they don't want, they didn't like the movie. Maybe. But they had their own shit going on. I mean, That's this true. is like the height of us as the people finding out how many sexual in incidents were happening around. Yeah. So they had their own fires. To they put had out. worse press going on yeah. than a, a Euro trip. <laughs> like a stoner comedy. Mm -hmm. So. Scotty finally throws Cooper's hat into the fireplace, which now billing out white smoke. Oh my gosh. A new Pope has been chosen. Never um, happened this fast ever. Yeah. Usually they have to wait two weeks and then Scotty gets tangled up in the curtains and the rod comes down. And all of a sudden <laughs> he's outside on the balcony looking, overseeing everyone in Vatican city. And they think like he is the new Pope because the Pope has ever been that young. Right. <laughs> it is a lot going on. And I love that random Italian man with the long hair who just is giving commentary <laughs> out of nowhere. 
it, he was it, serving. He was. <laughs> he was. It's just so that random. That actor was like, I only have a few lines. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give it happen. all that I have. <laughs> and he did not disappoint. You know who I kept thinking about when I saw him was <laughs> the leader uh, or the headmaster of the Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, the Russian school or whatever with the boys. Oh, Durmstrang? Um, yeah. Why can't I think of his name? I'm I failing. Was, I was thinking of him. I know it's not the same actor. Karkaroff. Yes. <laughs> I was almost disappointed in myself. <laughs> I, I I knew I wasn't going to do it. So. <laughs> I, I almost like went to my Funkos and like pulled him off to be like, I even have him right here. You have that one as a Funko? Oh, well, that. because I have... I have the mini Funkos. They were the advent calendars. I had two years uh, in a row. So it's all right. of the mini figs. They're up there. Anyway, so it's at this point, Scotty sees Mika in the crowd. He slides down that banner thing. That was dangerous. I thought it was going to run down the stairs. What are, what are we doing? <laughs> Mulan. <laughs> and this is about the time, because the like the guards are after him, everything. Because... He's just wrecked a lot of stuff in Vatican City. And like we said, you don't fuck with Vatican City. Yeah, the Pope was watching. (laughs) And so the guards are about to like arrest him, put him in Vatican jail. But the Manchester United shows up and they're like, we ride or die for our American fan club. It's so random. It really it's is. It's so weird. But I feel like internationally after the cops broke that up, they would have found them like all of them yeah. and got all of them were arrested. Yeah. But instead of being worried about that, what does Scotty do? He goes to fuck his girlfriend. I say girlfriend loosely because I pen pal in a confessional at church. <laughs> in is Vatican nothing, City. <laughs> in Vatican City is nothing sacred. No. <laughs> <laughs> and the best part is that little old lady comes in to confess she's been cheating on her husband <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's just booty cheeks on the grate in between the two confessional booths i would have just been poking <laughs> the fat coming out a little bit of play-doh <laughs> yeah but the actress who's in that i know her like i've seen her before and she's very funny, so I was I liked when they showed the bloopers of her saying, "Yeah, now rub her." <laughs> like she's <laughs> she cracked me up. Oh. I'm googling wow. who who that might be. Oh, oh it's Mindy Sterling. Um, oh, okay. Uh, Frau from Austin Powers. Mm, yes, 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 yes. That's exactly yes. I hope you show a picture so everyone. <laughs> She's one of those actresses. Like as soon as you see her, you're like, "Oh, that." Oh one yes, yes, I know her. A million things. So they get it on, and then she she get puts her clothes on, and she's got she's like got to go back to her boat. But she's like, "Let's keep talking, let's keep chatting." So they're still having a love affair, but very interesting to just hit it or miss. And yeah, get on I, the I mean, boat. I, she seemed impressed, so. <laughs> Good job, Scotty. Scotty yeah. does know. And then Jamie is approached by an older gentleman complimenting him on his tour. And he's like, yeah, I, I memorized Frommers. And then I threw in some things that Frommers didn't even have mentioned. And the man introduces himself as Frommers. I didn't know. Arthur. I think Arthur, it was. Jamie, yeah, something. Something. And then asks him if he wants a job traveling around Europe and kind of gathering information for a new version of the Frommer's Guide. So that's when everyone is kind of parting ways. They're saying goodbye to Jamie because Jamie's staying in Europe. So Jenny Cooper and Scotty get on a plane back to the United States. And this is when Jenny and Cooper are kind of disappointed that they didn't have their European love story like they wanted. Their sex capades. They didn't want no love. Well, Je- want. Jenny wanted like the the French sweep you off your feet, but Cooper will do because they're still <laughs> over Europe. And so they, they just decide to join the Mile High Club. I'm sorry. I only want to be in the Mile High Club if it's a like private plane, private plane, 
Them bathrooms are too small and nasty. <laughs> I couldn't get over the smell. I don't care how much they clean it. It still it still smells like piss. <laughs> just just an advisory from your friend Danielle, who has flown <laughs> on a many a plane. So we see three months later. Scotty's moving into his college dorm. He's writing to Mika. He's going to visit her over Christmas break. He's talking to Cooper on the phone. This is when we find out Jenny and Cooper are still together. And Cooper sees another robot that he must uh, <laughs> uh, avenge. And then uh, the ro uh, Scotty's roommate knocks on his door and he opens it and it's Mika because they... Uh, thought based on her name that she was a boy so which doesn't make any sense because you still when you fill out your paperwork you have to check off if you're female male whatever so okay. yes this is the least believable plot point of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it is <laughs> and so obviously scotty is very happy and then we get another uh the credits and Scotty doesn't know is playing. And then we see the bloopers that we talked about a little bit. And then did you probably not? I watched all the way to the end for some weird reason. But okay. the the thank yous in the credits were kind mm -hmm. of fucking bonkers. And okay. so I took pictures of them. So I okay. could read them to you. Hold on. Let me make this bigger for my old eyes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So like they thank like regular people at the beginning, like companies and stuff. And it says, Alec would like to thank his parents for allowing him to watch a lot of TV as a child. Also, his beautiful wife and child for all of their love and support and for coming all the way to Prague to stay for the duration of production and for having the courage of conviction to know that it was it was a terrible idea and to get the hell out four weeks later. So that was Alec. Okay. David would like to thank his parents, despite the fact that they still want him to go to medical school. Also, thanked, thanks to everyone who came and visited in Prague, the roommates, the comic art guys, the girlfriends, Lampoon folk. It was a crazy long flight, but the visits really helped. Everyone who didn't visit can go to hell. You oh. know who you are. Ooh. And to Al, Billy, and Jim, who taught me how to write, blame them. Jeff would like to thank his parents for buying all of the Cleveland Indians merchandise and for insisting that he thank them in writing. And Alex for all the great music and everything else. He would also like to thank Ted Griffin for watching over his house while he was in Prague and would now kindly thank him to stop crapping in it daily. The guys would also like to thank every single person who worked on the film for helping us make the movie. Also, Amisi May, Casa Blue, Alcohol Bar, The Chicken Salad at Scandals okay and the brownies at praha bake shop and that terrible 24-hour czech burrito place additional thanks to the writers guild and directors guild for always being there for us and then more regular thank yous but it was well, like they all got to write like their own weird little thank you in the credits well i'm surprised that they actually thank the directors guild because of their rules the writers, because Mandel, Berg, and Schaefer all directed, but only Schaefer could achieve director credit huh. for some reason. Interesting. Yeah. So that that so, was. And that is Hero Trip. We made it. <laughs> what a movie. Anything we missed in the fun facts? Yeah, I thought it was kind of cool that uh, um, Matt Damon took may have taken the role because he related to Scotty's character. Apparently in real life, he was actually dumped by a girlfriend who left him for Lars Ulrich, you know, the drummer from Metallica. So maybe that's his way of like having some, a sense of humor about it or getting some cathartic exercise to <laughs> pretend that he's in a rock band and he stole someone's girlfriend. I thought that was funny. And I also would like to know what girlfriend left Matt Damon for Lars Ulrich. That was my thought. <laughs> <laughs> I Have mean, you maybe seen it's, him as Donnie. <laughs> maybe at the time, maybe Matt Damon wasn't Matt Damon, and mm -hmm. and Lars has been Lars from Metallica for a long time. So that's true. 
the where is it? The kegs at the graduation party were filled with real beer. And so according to the directors in the scene in which Cooper is thrown behind Scotty after the hot tub incident, Jacob Pitts is quite inebriated. <laughs> Vinny Jones played for Wimbledon in the Premier League. He was not and still is not a Manchester United fan. <laughs> so he he hated Manchester United and he yeah. still had to do that. Yeah. He probably did that on purpose. <laughs> the nude beach scene originally had much less nudity in it, but once they started filming, they realized it took away from the comedy to have all the extras holding surfboards and other objects, Austin Power style, to cover their private parts. We thought it we thought, wouldn't it be funnier if it was wall-to-wall penises, said Mendel. The extras likely didn't likely didn't mind the change, according to <laughs> Trachenberg, there was a lack of shyness between takes, making for an awkward craft services environment. <laughs> Could you imagine trying to go eat and there's this dick swinging everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you put your penis away, sir? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. I don't, this might have been the first, the first group of on screen dongs I've ever seen. I don't, really? I'm looking, thinking back on it, I don't think I've seen real. You don't get them all. No, it's very rare. Yeah, <laughs> we talked about that in one of our other episodes where there needs to be more equality of among privates being shown in these movies because you see tits everywhere, which yeah, we did it, see that clip yeah, of all I think those the girls tits still uh, outnumber outweigh, the dongs yeah. in this movie. Which well, yeah, is... the the statue that he wanted to go look at that nobody wanted to. Yes. During the summer months, they said that Americans come and flock to the nude beaches, so all the women go to that one. <laughs> Jamie was right in wanting to go see the little fisherman statue. I I love this fact because it feels so authentic. The first time that Michelle Trachtenberg did her bikini scene, she shook out her hair so much that she got dizzy and fell over. I feel like I do this on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> just looking around too hard. <laughs> like, I just go, I'm like, oh. But also, it's because <laughs> my blood's low. <laughs> <laughs> Anemia, y'all. It ain't no joke. 95% of the movie was filmed in Prague. And entire streets would be green screened just to add in Big Bend and other monuments. And the opening scenes set in Ohio were filmed at the International School of Prague. They just Prague really well, progged it up. They shot a lot of movies in Prague because I think when we did A Knight's Tale, that mm-hmm. one was shot in Prague as well. They must I have think... really good incentives for yeah. filmmakers to go over there or it's like so cheap yeah it just makes sense to do it over there especially if you're shooting something that needs to be like european Mm -hmm. yeah true that oh and Uh, the scene inside vatican city was actually filmed in prague's national museum mm. i i love that the name of this movie was originally supposed to be ugly americans the montecito picture company originally purchased the film but later changed it to road trip. Like I said, they were trying to position it because they had a, I mean, sorry, they changed it to Euro trip and they later changed it so that the fans of road trip would want to see it. Also, the studio did not want any movie. They didn't want the movie to have the word ugly in it in any way. This is the superior trip movie. In my opinion, I got to watch road trip again. I, I to 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 say because I remember laughing a shit ton when I saw that movie. I don't know why. The road trip has some good scenes. Yeah, some good, and I don't I don't think looking back on this movie, there are plenty of scenes that were like, you should not put this on film. I don't remember <laughs> I don't remember road trip having too many of those. You know, crossing the line. Yeah, I, I haven't watched it in a while, but just thinking off the top of my head, I don't remember. There's the, I'm sure I'm gonna have a lot to say when we do road trip, but I know for sure like the fact that Tom Green's in it at all is just a lot, and he has this weird thing with a mouse that I don't understand. I believe Mitch, Mitch the snake, yeah. (laughs) And then the scene where there is a plus size woman with With DJ Qualls, Qualls. that one's a little interesting. (laughs) <laughs> and of course, then they're at a, they end up being at a frat, a black frat. 
so that that whole scene it there's just a lot going on there <laughs> that's gonna be an interesting the sperm the sperm donation yes <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think they. I think they stack up well, though. I when I was watching this, again, I watched it a ton when I was a teenager because all the boobs. But <laughs> there, it, it like every little scene, it, it like took me back, and I remember like what was going to happen. Even some of the stuff, the jokes and stuff they said, I was like, wow, I was surprised at how much I remembered. Yeah, and, and it is quotable to a point where like I still say this isn't where I parked my car. Mm -hmm. Like to this day, I still quote. Miscoozy all the time. (laughs) (laughs) Miscoozy. One one thing that did, I I did take away from watching this though, was how skewed some of these movies make my, I've never been to Europe. So this is what I, this is, this is Europe to me. So some of these where it's, you know, the, the Manchester United football teams, and that's what I expect if I go over there. Which yeah. sucks because <laughs> now I have, a, have a warped uh, vision of what these places are like. But <laughs> I have movies like this to think. Yeah. yeah. They are like really setting us up to be real dumb Americans going <laughs> overseas for real. <laughs> well, now that we're getting to our, our present day ratings, before we do that, Mark, again, just tell everybody where they can find your social your instagram page because like we said in the trailer you make some really cool engraving any pretty much any if you he, if you can engrave it he can he could do it like if it could be engraved mark can do it so yeah so uh on instagram it's uh at endless underscore engraving i pretty much only post on there um there are some links to other social medias on there uh in the instagram bio but for the most part it's just instagram so if you want a fancy yeti cup with whatever you want on it or a leather chucker hat for danielle just let me know <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm i'm open to suggestions too if like like, like danielle said if you want to engrave something ask me if i can do it and i probably can yeah, if you want that Stanley Cup to say Taylor and Travis for life, he'll do it. No problem. <laughs> if you want to say I'm going country because now Beyonce got her album out, he can do that too. Whatever it is. You know what? I don't want a trucker hat, but I want a cowboy hat. That's what I want. Because I'm in my country it says, era. It says in the Bay Hive. <laughs> As she said, reluctantly, re- reluctantly in the Bay Hive, or how did I get here? Beyonce made me do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm not a Beyonce stan. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, I am. <laughs> My hat says otherwise. <laughs> All right, Mike, we'll start with you. What is your today rating of your trip? Oh, you know what? I would same day, I would stream it, honestly there's going back looking at it it's just it's it's crazy how these movies were made (laughs) you know and and again being a a teenager not understanding a lot of I was definitely just I was watching it for the the rating I was watching (laughs) I was watching it for the wrong yeah for the wrong reasons so definitely a a stream it I would stream it one day give it back you can have it (laughs) how about you Jackie Oh, I still own this. I didn't have to watch it with ads on Pluto. <laughs> I own it on iTunes. It is still a would buy for me. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I had been holding off watching it since we started the podcast. And I was just like itching to, to watch it again. So I have my blinders on when it comes to Eurotrip. Uh, and I can not forgive a lot, but I can just overlook some of the things. <laughs> yeah, I don't ha- I don't hate the movie. I, I thought about like, I haven't wanted to see it since like, I know I bought it, but I think I bought it because when we worked at Blockbuster, so many things were like on sale and I was like, oh, I like this one. I would just buy them. So didn't hate it. I don't know. I'm like, will I watch it again? If it was just like on, it's hard to say if it was just on TV because like we don't watch TV that way anymore, yeah. you know, like to watch something it's a con- a conscious effort so i'm somewhere between two day and five day in the sense that 
I didn't hate it. Like there's so many other movies we've done that I'm like, <laughs> I'm glad it's over. So, mm -hmm. and my, plus I love Michelle Schrattenberg <laughs> so much. I'm I'm going to say two day. It was, it's, it's not a bad movie, but it's not like, I'm not going to watch it again. Let's be Is real. Definitely recommend if you've never seen it or if you yes. just want that, you know, the, the storyline is me, but the jokes are there. Yeah. Same thing. Don't, don't hate it. But if I win another 10 years without watching it, I'm not going to be mad. That's the perfect way to describe it <laughs> for me. Um, at least. And if you have some opinions, hard opinions about our opinions <laughs> or ratings, Make sure you hit us up at No More Late Fees on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, or Threads. We'd love to hear from you. Or you can call us at our quick drop, 909-601-NMLF, 909-601-6653. You can all slot us at the Twitters or hem us at the Threads. And we actually have a quick drop this week from our pal Nick at least we know he's listening because mm -hmm. he had some commentary about well I'm just gonna let you listen. okay Jackie you've never seen Groundhog Day you've never seen Groundhog Day <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> microphone in the podcast talk to me about movies but you haven't seen Groundhog Day honestly like, okay, this is not like, all right, like, I know you and Ken got all indignant with me because I hadn't seen The Martian. And I'm like, okay, like, I get it. It's fair. But here's the thing. The entire time The Martian's been out, I have had children. And Groundhog Day has been out for, like, fucking 30 years. You've been your <laughs> life to watch this masterpiece. Ken Conley, fix this shit. Do it now. <laughs> So needless he, to say, I was dying. <laughs> he's big mad. He wasn't even mad at me about saying the car statement. That was that's bad, Jack. You better get on that. Groundhog and so Day I said, uh, "Oh, the the prof is signing me homework." <laughs> <laughs> Nick, I've seen Groundhog's Day. I'm doing all right. I haven't seen The Martian, and I won't be bullied into watching it either. It's a very good movie. <laughs> Just saying. Mark Watney, Space Pirate. Also a Matt Damon movie. <laughs> Anywho, join us as we spice up your lives with Spice World next week. It's going to be an interesting one. Buckle up. More singing. <laughs> More double-decker buses. There's so many similarities. <laughs> <laughs> right. The same damn movie. <laughs> And thank you, Mark, for joining us. It was a pleasure as always. And we look forward to having you on more in the future. <laughs> likewise, likewise. Whenever you guys have a list of movies for me, just let me know. Will do. And as always, be kind and rewind. <laughs>